stand and sing our entrance hymn, hymn number 150, 150, and we will sing verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. Verses 1, 3, 5, and 6. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be always with you. Amen. Good morning. Amen. So today is very interesting um, and very important day for us Christians. We celebrate the feast of the Epiphany, the revelation of Christ to the human race. But also the 8th of January, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. So the Epiphany is supposed to be celebrated on the 6th of January, but for pastoral reasons, the bishops um, of Zimbabwe decided that we celebrate the Epiphany on this Sunday. But then it falls also on the same day when we celebrate the baptism. Very connected to feasts. Um, the baptism of Jesus where 
the Holy Spirit descends on Jesus and uh, manifests the Christ to the world. In the Epiphany, we are celebrating the revelation of Christ to pagans, the Magi, the wise men from the East. So reflect on this through the readings to see the meaning of these two feasts, the meaning of the readings to us and our situation. As we come together this Sunday morning, let us become aware of the times we are not open to the revelation of God in our lives, that we are not open to how God manifests himself in various ways to us in our lives through the situations, the people, the events that we interact with in life. I also want to propose that we pray for peace in Zimbabwe as we get into um, the so-called electoral mood. We have already started seeing in the social media some people already beating each other in the name of affiliation to political parties or to some political entities. Let us pray for peace in Zimbabwe during this electoral year. Coming before the Lord, we recognize that we are human living in a sinful world. Let us ask God to be graceful and merciful to us and forgive us our sins. I confess oh my God and to you. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, be loving to us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. We stand and sing the Gloria, number 120, 120.
us pray. O oh God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to behold the beauty of your sublime glory. Through Christ our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unit of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The first reading, a reading from Isaiah 60, chapters 1 to 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And nations shall walk by your light, and kings in the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes round about and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried in the arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you. The wealth of nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Amen. Responsorial Psalm. The responses. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. O God, give your judgment to the king, to a king's son your justice, that he may judge your people in justice and your poor in right judgment. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. In his days shall come justice flourish and great peace till the moon is no more. He shall rule from the sea to sea from the river to the bounds of the earth. All nations on earth shall fall prostrate before you, O Lord. The kings of Tarshish and the islands shall pay him tribute. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring him gifts. Before him all kings shall prostrate, all nations shall serve him. All For he shall save the needy when they cry, the poor and those who are helpless. He will have pity on the weak and the needy and save the lives of the needy. All nations shall fall prostrate. The second reading. It has now been revealed that the Gentiles are fellow heirs of the promise. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, I assume that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations, as it has now been revealed to his holy prophets and the prophets by the Spirit. That is, how the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. We have seen his star in the east and have come to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 
We have come from the east to worship the king. The Lord is with you. Listen now to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to the tradition of Matthew. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem and all Jerusalem with him, and assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. For so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means at least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word and I too may come and worship him. When they had heard the king, they went their way. And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them again, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. I mentioned at the beginning of Mass that this is a very important feast for us, where we celebrate the revelation of Christ to us. In the second reading, we hear Paul writing to the Ephesians, saying that Christ was revealed to the Gentiles, to the so-called pagans, to those who were considered as outcasts. Christ is also revealed to them, and they've become heirs to the kingdom of God, to new life that was brought by Christ. And the first reading in the gospel, they tell us how it happened. So if you look at the, the gospel, if you like, you will see three classes of people. Let's start with the, the major, the wise men from the east, who are not Jews, they have no exposure or experience of using the scriptures or the prophets in interpreting the signs of the times. They have no access to the high priests to explain to them what things mean in life and how Jesus Christ was to appear to them. These are people who are, in our modern language, secular or lay to the Jewish faith. They are professionals, astronomers, and they are reading the signs of the skies using their professional skills. They can see a star and say, this star means something more than what ordinary stars mean. In their own professional uh, work that they are doing, God revealed the Christ to them through the star and they to follow it. So when they followed the star from the east, from the east means far, from far away places, they followed the star. They got to the place they thought is where the, the, the king was born. And the star 
went off when it got to Herod's place. That's where also we had the high priests, the scribes, those who knew the scriptures, those who could read the prophets and interpret them. The star faded. The wise men could not see the star. And they thought they had arrived. So they went in and they asked, where is he, the king of the Jews, so that we can worship him? The second group of people we are looking at, Herod, the high priest, the scribes, those who knew the scriptures. They were shocked. They didn't know anything. God is revealing himself through Christ, and those who knew scripture did not see it. They did not know it. So Herod summoned all the high priests, the scribes, who know how to read and write the, the scriptures. And he asked them, where is this nonsense that I'm hearing from these people from the east, these pagans? And said, oh yes, it was written in the prophets. These people know how to read the prophets. And they pointed to the scriptures. And they know what the scriptures say, but they don't understand what the scriptures mean. They don't understand the signs of the times. They know the scriptures. They have easy access to what God is saying, but they don't understand what God means. So they indicated to the wise men where the Lord was born. And the moment the wise men left the place, the palace of the Lord, the star appeared again and led them exactly where Jesus was. And they found Jesus with his mother, Mary. So we can say the third group of people is Mary and those who were around Jesus when the wise men came and they worshipped Jesus. So I want to unpack that a bit. The wise men, in a way, can be representing most of us who are Gentiles, not of originary Jewish or Christian origins. People who are born in, in this sinful world, people who have to struggle to find God, people who are going on in our day-to-day -day profession, doing our work for survival, doing our work to keep this world, this beautiful world, moving. And God comes to us once in a while. He reveals himself to us in different ways. But you need to be open to the revelation of God for you to see God, for you to see the star that leads to Christ. If you don't have the openness the willingness to understand, to see that star, you will never see it. It will be before you, but you don't see that this star means something. So in our professions, various professions, God reveals himself to us. Maybe through people, maybe through experiences, painful experiences, joyful experiences, challenging experiences, God reveals himself to us. We need to open our eyes and see what is God saying to me personally? What is God saying to us as a team or as an organization? God reveals to us, himself to us. You may be a teacher. You may be an accountant. You may be a manager. You may be a whatever. You may be just an ordinary person who you think you're an ordinary person doing an ordinary work, but it's your profession. God comes in. And he says something to us. God calls us. Every day, God calls us to be and to do something in life. But we need to open our eyes and ears to hear and see what God is saying. We need to read the stars before us and follow them. What is God saying to us? Sometimes through people. He says something, maybe sometimes through some of those people who are very difficult to live with, difficult to work with. He says something to us. He calls us to patience. He calls us to love. He calls us to charity. 
He calls us to respect. He calls us to worship him through people, through events, through situations. We need to open our eyes. If we are to join the group of the wise men, and once God reveals himself to us, naturally we are moved to worship him. We are moved to worship him once we see God's revelation to us, like the wise men. But on the other hand, we also know that we are living in this very sinful world. We are living in a very sinful world where sin is more attractive than faith, prayer. Anything sinful is more attractive these days. Anything undesirable is more attractive these days. It's more attractive to wait at the robot, the, the traffic light, to wait for the green light to, to shine against you than to go through the red. And we complain that the, our roads are not maintained and our lights are not maintained. Sometimes there's no electricity and the lights are not working. So we have an excuse of going through a red robot. It's very attractive. It's less attractive to go through a green robot than to go through a robot, a red robot. The same applies in life. It's more attractive to do sinful things. Mm. So, Herod and the, 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 the high priest, they are attracted to be critical about who is a Jew, who is a proper Jew, and who is not. Who should be an outcast, who should be judged and thrown away. That's what they were obsessed about. They are not seeing the signs of the times. They don't see the revelation of God through Christ. They know the scriptures, they have access to the scriptures. They go for mass every Sunday. They listen to homilies every Sunday. They discuss the, the, the scriptures every Sunday and every day sometimes. But they are not moved to conversion because they are focusing on the wrong thing. They are focusing on who should be called a Christian and who should not be. And that's the, what the, the high priests were doing. They would read the prophets in such a way that they would say so and so is not anticipating Christ. We are anticipating Christ. But Christ is already there and they don't see it. And look at it because of that indifference that they had. Because of that ignorance, negligence. When the star came to their place, it faded. The light which we hear from the first reading that when this Christ comes, you will light the world. You expel the darkness of the world, the sin of the world. It faded when it got at the place of Herod. Because of the eternal disposition, because of the attitude, because of the lifestyle, because of how they see people, how they relate with people. And sometimes that's what happened with us. The star of the Lord fades when it gets to us, if you listen to the first reading, it says, you, the glory of God will come to you and your light will shine and you will be the glory of God to others. You will be the glory of God to others. You will be the light of God to others. But if the star fades whenever it gets above you or at you, how would you then become the light of God to others? How do you become the glory of God to others? So the question that I want to ask as I move on to this one is, how is God revealing himself through you to others? How does God reveal himself through you to others? Is there anything that is good that you do which others look at and say, this is really the daughter or son of God? Is there anything good that you do? I'm not, I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just challenging us to do more. Huh? I know there's a lot of good that we do. But uh, can we do more so that people can obviously see God in us and through us? We want to see that star shining. We want to see that star shining. And look at it lastly. Mary, Joseph, and those who are around Jesus. What's happening to them? They have the Christ. They have the light already. It doesn't have to be brought from outside. They have to, don't have to go outside to look for it. They have it. They carry it around. And that's who we are. In many ways, we have the grace of God. God has given us his grace. He gives us his grace. He continues to give us his grace. Sometimes we complain 
and we always struggle in life because we are so pessimistic and we look at our struggles and our pain and we forget the grace of God in our lives. We need to calm down, be silent, look inside and deeply into your life and appreciate the grace of God in your life. Jesus is present in your life. The revelation of Christ comes through others, through situations, events. But God, who reveals himself, is already present in your life. He's only manifested in various ways. Let us pray that that God who is present in us may continue to influence us to be the light of the world, to be the glory of God in this world, which is becoming dark, slowly, not only because of climate change, but also because of ethical change. Let us praise the Lord. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God. Let us pray for peace in Zimbabwe, especially as we prepare for the political elections in this country. We pray for political tolerance, political maturity, that those who belong to different political parties, especially the main political parties, do not encourage people to fight, to kill each other. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for children who are traveling from different places, going back to school, those going to boarding schools, including here at St. George's. We pray for genesis for them. Uh, they travel safely, especially against the advice given about the heavy rains, that um, all the children may travel safely to their schools. And we pray for a successful beginning of this term. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick among us. We pray for healing. 
We pray for comfort. We pray for consolation, especially for those with terminal illnesses, that the Lord may continue to console them. Lord, hear us. As we begin a new year, we also pray that families, especially parents, may continue to receive the graces of God in taking care of their children. May this year be a grace filled, a blessed year for parents as they take care of their children and their grandchildren. Lord, hear us. And in the depths of our minds and hearts, let us also express our own desires and graces that we ask from God. Lord, hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, we present all our prayers spoken and those in the silence of our hearts and minds to God through you who live and reign with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Hymn number 136, 136. sacrifice may be pleasing and acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church in which we are 
offered now and not gold or incense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed and received is offered here, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for, this, for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed and he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all women, men and children across generations and nations for the forgiveness of sins. Always do this to remember me. mystery of our faith. Save us. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an, inher in an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, their blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of the whole world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Robert Christopher Androff, our Archbishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and all those who have leadership position in your church. 
and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you this morning in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather yourself, all your children scattered throughout the world. To our sick brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, friends, and neighbors, we pray for comfort, healing, and consolation to them. And to our departed brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, friends, and companions, and to all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this world, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Formed by divine teaching and Jesus' instruction to us that God is the Father of all. Let us join our voices now and pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins and the sinfulness of the world we live in, but on the faith and prayers of a church and graciously grant peace and unity to your children, especially in this country as we prepare for elections. Grant peace and unity to the many people who are living in war situations. We pray for those in Cabo de Cardo in the northern part of Mozambique, those living in the eastern part of DRC, those in Ukraine. Grant peace especially to the women and children who suffer the most in war situations in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the same peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. With a smile, let us spread this peace among ourselves. Lamb of God, And behold, my brothers and sisters, the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ who takes away the sin of the world, how privileged and blessed are we to be invited to his banquet. Lord.
we sing our post-communion hymn, hymn number 170, 170. Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord. 
always and everywhere that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with a true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate, the mystery of our own salvation, through Christ our Lord. There is a short announcement to be made, I think. Good morning, everybody. I just wanted to say that confirmation classes for those um, youngsters in Form 3 to Form 6 will start on Monday the 16th at 5.30 outside the chapel. Um, anybody interested like to contact me after Mass or just pitch up on Monday the, the 16th. Thank you very much. Thank you. And those who feel weak in their faith and want to be reconfirmed, they can also come for the confirmation classes. <laughs> the Lord is with you. May the Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass has ended. Let us go in the peace and the glory of the Lord. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend and a good week. Thank you, Father. Number 156, 156.